Generalized linear models are very commonly used in research. Logistic regression model and many other commonly used models belong to this broader family. And it's useful to understand that these are techniques that are essentially variants of one more general technique than to try to understand each of these techniques separately. So I will now explain the principle of generalized linear model. The idea of generalized linear model is that we have a linear regression model here. So we have uh, the model that is linear that gives the linear predictor. Then we apply a link function f here and uh, the y is the f plus some variation that the model doesn't explain. Alternatively, the uh, model can be expressed as expectation. So the, uh, the, the function and the linear predictor here give the expected value of the dependent variable given the observed values of x. Then we also need a probability distribution for the uh, dependent variable given the expected value. In logistic regression analysis, we use the Bernoulli distribution, which is ones and zeros only. In normal regression analysis, we use the normal distribution. In other models, we use other distributions. These are, this family consists of some very commonly used models. For example, from Wikipedia, we have uh, the distribution here and we have the link function here. So a distribution and a link function define a model. And uh, this list here consists of some very commonly used models. For example, uh, we have the logit link here and then we have a uh, Bernoulli distribution here and that is the logistic regression analysis. Then we have a uh, multinomial distribution which is a uh, a categorical distribution and a logit link that gives us multinomial logistic regression analysis, which is very commonly used for categorical dependent variables. So this is ones or zeros, a choice between two options. This is a choice between multiple options. Then we have Poisson regression analysis, which is very commonly used for counts. The link, the um, stata supports many of these distributions and uh, this is the list from Stata documentation. And it may look like a lot of things to know. So there are about different 15 different distributions and then uh, some distributions can be used with multiple different links. What's useful to understand is that typically when you choose a distribution there's one default link and uh, for example the choice between logit and probit uh, when you use one distribution, the choice between, for example, logit and probit link is, has very little consequences on the results. There are special cases where one must be used. The complementary log log is very uncommon in management research. So basically, whenever you use any of these that support logit, you are going to be fine just by using the logit distribution. So it boils, the question of which GLM to use boils down to uh, choosing a distribution that you apply and the distribution is uh, which one you use depends on the phenomena that you're studying. A choice between 15 is, is, a, is a big choice, but fortunately these uh, distributions fall into some categories. So you have to first pick a category and then you pick within the category. They are the Bernoulli, beta and binomial are for data that are ones or zeros or between one and zero. So the Bernoulli is ones and zeros only. Beta is between one and zero. So zero and one. That's uh, for fractions. So how large share of your time do you spend working varies between zero and 100. So you will you be using beta. And uh, beta distribution is one kind of fractional response model. So beta, GLM with beta distribution is one way to do fractional response models. There are also others that fall outside the GLM family, but it's useful to know that uh, there's at least one that you can apply, which is the beta. Then binomial is just a sum of Bernoulli distribution. So if you have summary data, you know that you have uh, 10 individuals, you have groups of 10 individuals, and then you know how many of those 10 individuals have, for example, committed a crime, and then you can apply binomial distribution because it's a sum of 10 independent events. 
Then um, categorical models use ordinal or multinomial distributions. Ordinal distribution is an ordered category. So if you have a tall person, a taller person and the tallest person, then you know the order of those people, but you don't know how much taller the tallest person is than the taller person. And you don't know how, what's the difference between the taller and the tall person. So you only know the order, you don't know how far those observations are, then you will be using uh, the ordinal distribution. Then multinomial is for categorical variables. If you have, uh, for example, if you're studying which country a company expands to and you have the choices of Finland, Sweden and Norway, that's a categorical variable and the, the categories, the different countries don't really, ha really have an order. So you will be using a multinomial regression for that or GLM with the multinomial distribution. Then uh, the next two, the, the Poisson and uh, the, the negative binomial are for count models. The choice between these two are, is mostly an empirical matter for most people. There are theoretical reasons sometimes to refer Poisson and sometimes negative binomial, but for most researchers you just use whichever model fits your data. And uh, the difference or, or what this assume is that they have a, a count of independent events. For example, uh, count how many people die in a country in a year and you want to predict that with the number of people in the country. So that's where you will be using Poisson regression analysis. Negative binomial regression analysis is used for when the variation of the data is more than what the Poisson model would predict. So that's a uh, Poisson with over this person. So that's uh, but that's an empirical matter. So typically when you apply these two models you run both and then you compare the results using a likelihood ratio test and then uh, you choose the one that's supported by that test. The final models are survival models. Survival analysis concerns uh, scenarios such as uh, how, uh, like how, what's the expected uh, amount of, of, of uh, how many, what's the life expectancy of a person, how much time is there, the, how much is the expected mean time between two failures in some equipment. So you are looking at, at a time and then after a time an event happens. And you are trying to either uh, predict the time or predict the risk for the event to happen depending on what you're modeling. But these, re these are used for scenarios where, where time passes and then something occurs. It can occur repeatedly such as uh, failures of equipment or it can occur just once such as a death of a person. When you want to do survival modeling the choice between these uh, requires some expertise. So you basically have to uh, take a book and study a bit of survival models and survival analysis before you start applying any of these. Let's take a look at the GLM results and what kind of results a GLM analysis provides you in addition to regression analysis results. The GLM results, this is done with R, look a lot like regression results from R. The uh, first thing we have again, model summary, tells us that we use the Menards data set uh, predicting Menards with age and binomial distribution which in uh, R means that it's Bernoulli distribution with logit link functions or logistic regression analysis. Then we have uh, deviance residuals. So deviance residuals are something similar to residuals in a regression analysis in that they have they are normally in large samples they are normally distributed. So uh, the mean uh, is at zero, the median is uh, should be close to zero then the minimum and maximum should be about equally far apart. Then we have coefficients which is exactly the same as regression analysis. The problem is because GLMs are nonlinear models these are difficult to interpret directly. Some models such as logistic regression analysis have special interpretations like odds ratios, Poisson regression analysis gives you incidence rate ratios and so on. But uh, an easy way to interpret all these results is just to plot the data or plot the marginal predictions from the model and see how the dependent variable behaves as a nonlinear function of the independent variables. Then we have uh, model quality indices. First thing uh, there is uh, a dispersion parameter 
re so if we use the normal distribution uh, the regression analysis the linear predictor gives us the mean and we also need to estimate the variance the dispersion of the distribution and this this person parameter here is what is the variance of of the distribution in Bernoulli distribution uh, the variance is completely determined by mean so it is not estimated separately. That's the same thing in many other models. In some models we estimate this person, in some models, some distributions, the this person is given based on the mean. Then we have deviances. The deviance is calculated based on uh, the log, the minimized log likelihood statistics. So deviance is minus two times the log likelihood and uh, the null deviance here compares how much better this model is to a model that doesn't predict the, mod, the dependent variable at all. And uh, then uh, AIC is uh, a, a statistic that tells us, uh, that allows us to compare models. So it's kind of like adjusted R square. It allows us to compare non nested models. It doesn't really have any interpretation. It just uh, a larger value is better. So smaller value is better. Uh, practical considerations when using GLMs. So uh, there are a couple of practical considerations. Well, first of all, you have to uh, build your model and you have decisions to make. You have to build the, the linear predictor. So what variables go to your model? What are the independent variables? And then you have to choose the, the response distributions. What is the distribution of your dependent variable and which link function you apply? In practice, it's a good idea to always start with normal regression analysis. The, the reason for that is, is twofold. First of all, normal regression analysis is simple to, to use and it will tell you something that you didn't know before the analysis. The second thing is that sometimes even if um, you could be using a GLM, you could be just as fine with regression analysis. So a linear model could be adequate for your data and if you do regression analysis and the diagnostics for that, you don't identify any problems, then you are going to be okay with just a linear model and it's easier to apply than GLM. It's easier to do diagnostics and easier to interpret. So if you can apply linear model, then by all means just apply linear model. Then we have assumptions. So regression analysis makes assumptions and so do GLMs. So the GLMs are basically inherit all regression assumptions except those assumptions that are about the error term because we are not using a normal distribution, we are using something else. The assumptions are that the sample size is large. So GLMs have been proven to work well in large samples, but only certain special cases are proven to work well in, in small samples. So generally you have to assume a large sample. The fact that something has been proven only in large samples such as unbiasedness doesn't mean that this wouldn't work in small samples. Just that they have been proven to work in, in large samples. They have not been proven to work in small samples. Nevertheless, experience has shown that they do. Then uh, the model is correct. So you have a correct distribution and you have a correct linear predictor. Then uh, you do diagnostics the same way as in a regression analysis. The diagnostics are not as well developed, but basically they involve fitting uh, or, or, or plotting fitted values and different kinds of residuals and observed values against one another. Then you look for certain kind of patterns like you do in a regression analysis and then you uh, make adjustments. You can also do influence statistics such as uh, Cook's distance. Then uh, multiple models can be compared using likelihood ratio tests which compare the deviances between the two models and interpretation uh, we have pseudo R square statistics. The idea of pseudo R square is that uh, with R square in a regression analysis, it has multiple different interpretations and properties. So the R square is the squared correlation between the predicted value and the observed value. It is the amount of variance explained and so on. In GLMs, you can have a statistic that has one of these properties, but not all of these properties. So in practice, we have different statistics that mimic certain aspects of R square. They are called pseudo R squares. There are probably 10 or 15 different ones that you could apply. And uh, usually it's a good idea to uh, 
just when you do an analysis then check which pseudo R squares are available for that analysis in your statistical software then you read a bit about the, uh, what those uh, those pseudo R squares quantify and then uh, you choose the ones that you think are most relevant for your research question or you can use one based on what the readers uh, recommend. I don't generally use pseudo R squares myself much because I like to plot my data and, and plotting gives me the size of the effect anyway. That brings us to, uh, to plotting. It's very important that you plot your data because interpreting the odds ratios or, or even if you can interpret them really well, explaining to your reader what they mean can be difficult. Showing a plot how the predictive probability goes as a function of, for example, uh, age is a lot easier for your reader. Then uh, some link and distribution combination have special interpretations like odds ratios in regression analysis, incidence rate ratios in Poisson regression and so on. But you don't have to know all that if you just know how to plot the data.